Hi, it's Arlie. I'm going to do a um, sketchbook tour because I just finished a sketchbook. So let's go. Okay, take three. I like to have a bunch of different sketchbooks going at the same time. And then that way I can choose um, based on time and what I'm in the mood to paint. I can choose size and orientation so that I, I try not to flip the book so that if I wanted to do a landscape, I would actually go get a book that has a landscape orientation rather than rotate the book. Because it turns out, especially for these flip throughs, I like to be able to just go page to page. Although every once in a while I get messed up and they flip the book all the way upside down and then I end up with one page that's upside down which is why I now put one sticker on the front of each book. And I got these from, in Japan from a company called B Side, letter B. And I think this one says B Side Label. And uh, so we bought, my son and I were in Japan uh, like six months ago, and um, we found a little place that was selling stickers and we loved these stickers and bought a bunch of them. And then uh, I thought, oh, this will be easy to find them online and buy more of them. Well, that wasn't true. And so I'm just really glad I bought a bunch of them because I just love their style, their vinyl indoor outdoor stickers. A lot of people put them on their laptops or like they're drinking their bottles and stuff. But I like to put one on the cover of my um sketchbooks and then I also use them inside I'm on the outside of my um, traveler's notebook that I use kind of like a journal so uh, let's see so this notebook is from Koval sketchbooks you should look them up online check out their products I have a number of different ones this is the smooth paper and it's um, not all the way cotton. I do prefer all the way cotton, 100% cotton, but I think these this is 50% cotton, but that's fine. You, you just, um, you keep moving forward and you find your preference. I, I can't really, I don't wanna give you advice so that you can have what I have because you probably have different things you're working on. Um, I like to draw and paint on the same page. So I like the smoother um, paper, which is, let's see if I get this right. I think hot press is smooth paper and cold press is the bumpy. However, as I become more mature as a painter, I've, I understand why the cold press, the bumpy is fun. And um, it just means I have to choose carefully. If I'm in the mood to draw, I tend to use my books that have the smooth paper. So um, I'm just gonna flip through, I don't know, let's see. I think I'll zoom in and just kind of talk through each one. And then also, um, because I have all these different sized books, sketchbooks, I, I don't work consecutively like page one, two, three, three you know, whatever, blah, blah page one, two, three, four, all the way through until I'm done, I grab the book that has the size page and the type of paper I want and I'll work in it. And um, then also sometimes I'll work only on the right-hand page and then I end up with a bunch of left-hand pages that are blank. So I'll go back through and work on the left page. So they're kind of consecutive order, but not exactly. So you can tell I started this one September last year and I just finished it November of this year. So this is about one year of work, but it doesn't mean it's the only work I do. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I try to do a little something every day. So sometimes it's tiny, which is why it's really nice to have these little books. Sometimes it's just the tiniest little, so here's one I did upside down by accident. Um, just quick, I don't mean to give you a whole flip through of this book, but sometimes, you know, I just want like grab a pencil, colored pencil and a photo and just spend, this probably was 20 minutes. So, um, the size, using a smaller size is nice because it, it means you don't have to spend a lot of time on something, but then, uh, you find that it's a little frustrating, almost sort of claustrophobic when you want to get into details and you're working on a small page 
in the, and then you move up to a larger size sketchbook or an actual big piece of paper, it feels so luxurious, but it also takes much longer. And you have to, when you're painting, you have to use more, you have to pay more attention to your edge that's drying as you're painting. This is from a photo and I can't even remember where. Japan, Denver, no idea. Um, I kind of went nuts on the sprinkled paint, which I kind of wish I hadn't done, but that's okay. One of the things that's hard about watercolor for me is uh, remembering not to paint the areas that I want to remain white. Although now um, I'm much more comfortable just painting over it and just adding white paint if I want white again. But that's one of the tricks and the hardest parts about watercolor. And uh, the other thing that's really hard about watercolor is waiting for it to dry before you do your next layer. But luckily here in Colorado, it's so dry. Um, things just dry almost immediately. And then um, a little, uh, it looks like a, a um, hair dryer, but it's not. It just puts out heat right here. And it takes maybe 20 seconds to go and if you want to heat, um, dry up a little spot that's not dry, not fully dry, because that's sort of the the bane of learning watercolor is waiting for it to dry, trying to work on it while it's still wet, and then you end up with a look that you don't like, and there's kind of nothing you can do about it. You've basically ruined, but the, you can't ruin anything in a sketchbook because that's the point of sketchbooks is to learn this stuff. So uh, this one, I'm going to zoom out for this one. So um, this one uh, is not from a photo. This one I actually did in real life in plein air. This is watercolor, which is using three colors only because I uh, that's sort of a challenge for me to use fewer and fewer supplies, smaller and smaller space, limited time. And then as I do that, my skill grows and then also I was telling some friends recently it's a little like when you go camping and you're sleeping on the ground in a sleeping bag then you get home and you're back in your own bed and you're like oh my god this is the best and so in a way limiting something like your time your size your supplies colors um, it's a little like that sleeping bag experience. It is an experience and you can enjoy it and it's fun and everything. But then you, when you come home and you get back to your stuff, oh, it's the best. I really like this painting. I think I I have kind of a crush on, on yellow and I have a hard time doing a painting without yellow. So um, this is now me a year later, more than a year later, uh, seeing this about my work and so I think that's an area I can work on. Sometimes I'm not inspired so I just sort of look online for some ideas and I just I want to play with my supplies but I'm not in the mood to do anything like I can't think of what I want to do so in this case I just played with my colors and um, it was based on somebody else's idea. I wrote idea from Lou Davis. So I suppose if you look up Lou Davis, you might see something like this. Of course, you know, if I went and tried to copy Lou Davis's work, whatever it looked like, I'll try to find it and put it here. Um, if I imitated it and copied it and then tried to sell it without giving the person credit, that's one thing. But when I'm working in a sketchbook and getting inspiration from other artists, I really don't, I, it's, I, it doesn't bother me. I feel like um, I'm singing along with a song I, I'm hearing on a radio, but it's not a song and it's not the radio. It's Instagram and I'm not singing along. I'm painting along. So I'm just sort of like, let's see if this is something I want to do or is, am I good at? And another thing about doing these kinds of things is learning brush control. So um, I think, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think they're painting was much neater and mine's kind of blobby and messy and the, I, so I think this is kind of part of my style is that I just can't do fully neat work. Uh, this is because I liked this so I wanted to do something similar and there's that yellow again and um, 
it, there's just so many things that I want to learn. One is how to make things in the distance look distant, how to make a road or a path or a river all look, or river, water, all look unique. Um, another thing is how to do shadows. Um, another thing is how to do foreground. Um, uh, another thing is atmosphere. How do you how do you show atmosphere? Uh, how do you show distance? So I really it's funny. I I keep painting realistically or drawing realistically, but that's not what I want to end up doing. But I feel like I can't move from this point in my learning until I feel like I've pegged it. So I'm still, I, I have to keep moving forward until I feel like, like I can check it off. So that's why I'm doing this sort of illustrative, um, does it look like what I'm trying to make it look like style. Eventually I want to learn if there's an abstract painter in me, but I Although I think about it a lot, I can't get myself to move into that space. This is another one of a building and taking some time to draw the details. I remember really, really enjoying this one. I think it was my old house. Oh, that was my stomach growling. And then just sort of the one of the things that make messes me up is um I'm uninspired, but I've set aside an hour or two to do art. And so I feel like it's kind of like a, um, exercising when you don't feel like exercising. Like you just have to keep moving forward. So sometimes I'll just like, ugh, I'm just going to do something. And I remember that's what this was. Um, I think I got some new paints. And then this was uh, a photo that my dad took of my mom before I was born. So I was born in 1964. It's an old black and white photo. She's leaning against a car and she's holding some grapes. But my, one of my favorite artists is Henri Toulouse-Lautrec. And he was a painter who also did prints. And one, so in one of the things that he developed or he became sort of well known for was taking his paintings and converting them into simplified shapes in order to make prints from them. And I just keep feeling like this uh, photo of my mom is going to end up looking like a Toulouse-Lautrec print if I keep working on it. So you, if you watch my flip throughs or you look at my Instagram, you'll recognize this because they keep trying to figure out like how, how would Toulouse-Lautrec handle this? How would he simplify the shapes to the point where it, it still is what it is, but it's um, for printing, it's been made into sort of blocks and simplification. So um, this is that yellow. I just love yellow. I don't know what it is. This is from a photo I took in Japan. I think I was trying to do I had it. I pictured what I was going to do and I didn't really accomplish it. And I don't really like this, although I do like some certain spots. I really like the way I handled these trees. Um, I think the water looks pretty cool. I wish I had, so I like that tree. I wish I had felt less um, obligated to draw these uh, reeds. I wish I had made it more of a shape with just a little bit of texture rather than feeling like I had to paint every line. Yeah, so I'm not, I don't really like this one a lot, but that's not the point of sketchbooks for me. Sketchbooks for me is like exercise, like somebody who's training for a marathon and so they're going running every day. This is my run this day. This was painted in plein air um, at a park with water. And I'm really inspired by uh, an artist online. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. I think it might be Jessamy. And um, I'll, sh I'll link her here and, and or in the description. But she, she goes in on the contour lines. And what a contour line is, if the item you're looking at had stripes on it, you're drawing the stripes, even though um, in actuality, this water didn't have stripes on it. I knew it was water and it did have kind of movement ripples. And so I added these lines because I feel like that's how she handles um, 
you know, water and grass and trees. And so I was, I still am a year later trying to figure out how the, the language that she uses to describe a landscape, if there's something that I can borrow and bring into mine. And also I really love stands of trees how they are a blob and then they have like like I don't know like when you see a bunch of like flamingos on the beach and it's just a big body of pink bird bodies and then all their legs sticking out I just really love a stand of trees kind of like a little buddy system <laughs> so um I keep driving around here I live near Fort Collins and I keep seeing stands of trees and I'm like Oh, look at them. Look at that little family. I feel like they're like a little unit. It's cute. Weird. I'm a weird artist. This is sort of a photo. Uh, didn't turn out at all like what I wanted. One of the things that's I found to be very hard is hitting a certain pink that I can see in my head and I just can't get it. Also, um, cherry blossoms. We were there during um, cherry blossom, and this is from a photo, not from real life. Um, cherry blossoms aren't actually pink. They're sort of a brownish pink, and that's really hard to paint without making it look kind of blech. And one of the things I'm learning as an artist is that it's okay if I exaggerate, if I'm trying to communicate something. So um, I think this is kind of the beginning of learning that uh, you know, I'm remembering pink. In the photo, it's not pink. But when I add this brown, it makes it look kind of blah. It's a kind of a like almost a process of negotiation. You're like, I know what it looked like. I know what I want my painting to look like. You know, it. how do I get there? The compromise, I guess. This is... Oh, this was also painted in plain air at the same place. So I did a little bit of the contour lines on the water and I also showed the contour of the land. I'm not, this is another one where I think I did too much detail on these uh, dried, I don't remember what they were, some kind of dried grass. But just trying, trying stuff. Here's another um, uh, Sakura cherry blossom and learning how to lay light colors on top of dark colors so even though this uh, blossom is from the same tree this is this is on top of a light background and this is on top of a dark background so I the artist get to change the tint or shade so that it um, you use the trick of the eye to bring the blossoms forward by painting them lighter on top of a darker area. So you just, you know, you're painting and then you're like, oh, I'm going to try that thing. And you try the thing and it's like, eh, not great. But, I mean, if I had looked, if I years ago look at this painting, could look ahead at this painting, I'm sure old me would say, wow, that's a really great painting. But now, it's a year later and I'm looking back on it and I'm like, ooh, I see a lot of areas for improvement. But um, there's no way for somebody to improve if they don't move through things like this. So that's all a sketchbook is. It's just like, oh, I'm going to try that. And I also really like the contrast of the black wood against the pink. And I feel like in a way that's the beauty of the the spring blossoms on trees is the way the branches almost look like calligraphy. They look like somebody's writing and handwriting and then there's just this puff of soft color around it. I, I can't remember what this is. I think it's supposed to be water. Which, it does look like water, but it looks like water going up in a wave. Lots to learn. I think I did this in gouache. This is from a photo I took in Pakistan, or yeah, Pakistan in 1983. Um, these um, bus drivers all over and truck drivers lavished so much love and ornament onto their trucks. They were just gorgeous. They had hammered tin. The lights, um, same in Russia years later, 
the light the lens cap over the lights would have colored liquid in them almost like a little lava lamp there's just like every little detail was beautiful just like little fringy things and everything was clean and um so uh not only do i want to accurately paint this driver and his truck but i also want to try to capture the himalayas in the background I think I painted this a few times. I don't know if I did it in this book, but I remember I kept this photo out for a while so that I could keep trying to show the mountains in a way that's pushed back and atmospheric, which I'm still working on, is how to add atmosphere and not feel like I have to paint it exactly the way it looks in the photo, which is my, that is my struggle right now. This is, yeah, this is from a photo I took in Santa Fe last year. Um, I, I, my background is as an illustrator, which kind of means that I can decide what the scene looks like. It doesn't have to look accurate, but I have to decide that ahead of time. I have to give myself permission to paint things, to paint the world that I want it to be rather than true to the photo. And so I remember thinking specifically, don't make it accurate paint it the way you want to see it. And I, so I had to keep reminding myself of that. This I painted at Cole Creek, which is a little creek that runs through um, a part of Lafayette, Colorado, which is Northwest Denver, kind of near Broomfield. I, I want to be the kind of artist that carries my art supplies and just stop the car and paint, just stop the car and paint. So I did it. I forgot bug sprays and that was the drag. While I was here, the guy who runs a an organization called Friends of Coal Creek stopped by and said hi and his daughter is adorable. I think I remember that I wasn't gonna draw on it and then I realized I wasn't gonna be able to get what I wanted with the texture of these trees unless I drew the the um, bark of the tree and as soon as I did I was like oh I'm so glad I chose that I can't remember I think so when we went to Long's Gardens in Boulder the iris were all in bloom and it was absolutely crazy raining it was drizzly and then rain and then drizzle and then rain I think I painted this at home later because the one that I painted there looks great but it's just a bunch of soggy paint you can't really tell what it is but I really like that kind of folk art look of painting your thing and then drawing in the man-made sculpt uh, structures in a in a very simple, clean line. And um, I really like this style. And I this is one of the sort of words in my vocabulary as an artist that I will continue to do because as soon as I add this building with its little roof in an imperfect way. And the lines, then I'm like, oh, like it at to me, it adds the location. It makes you feel like you're there. Um, that you imagine maybe I parked over here and walked over, you know, because if it didn't have these, if it didn't have these, let's see if I can cover this one up, then it's just a field and trees. And it just doesn't have that, like, ooh, I wonder who lives there. It to me, it adds a little bit of story. Um, this is from a photo I took in Japan. I took a lot of photos knowing that I would be here at home looking for things to paint. And so this was a nighttime um, view near our hotel with the cherry blossoms lit from below and a nighttime sky that was lit up by city lights. This is from a photo. It's gouache. Um... It felt really complicated and annoying. I guess I still don't really like it, so it's just practice. And there's some little areas I like. Leaves are overwhelming. I took a figure drawing class fairly recently and the teacher wanted us to do a uh, in-depth, uh, detailed drawing of a skeleton and I could not keep track of how many ribs. And I think it ended up almost looking like an MC Escher drawing because I, I lost track even of which ribs were on top and which were underneath because I, I have a hard time seeing details in the 
Peanuts cartoon when the adult goes wah, 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 wah. It's like I do that, but with my vision. I just can't see things. I can't see them. I look right at them. I know what I'm looking at, but I can't process it and get it to come out on paper. Something to work on. So um, this is the view from the side of my house looking north, and I did the thing, the Jessamy thing with the trying to show the contour of the land. And this time I think I drew it with paint. I was working outside, um, so it dried really quickly, which gives me the chance to, like I don't have to wait for it to dry to put the next layer on because it just dries so quickly. It, it is dry. And I, I think I, I had fun doing the detail of the grass and the pine needles. Um, I, right now looking at it, I see a lot of room for improvement, but overall I like it. I think I did a good job. I think, um, I remember sitting down and thinking of what I wanted it to look like. And this actually is very close to what I wanted it to look like. I wish I had drawn the buildings here the way that I had drawn them in that Iris painting. But actually, I think they might've been done at different times. 423. 523. So this one was painted in May and this was painted in April. So maybe I looked at this and decided not to paint the buildings next time I had buildings and draw them instead. So maybe I advanced a bit. This is a view sitting on my front uh, side porch, the other side. So um, my house is right here. So in the last painting, I was sitting on the other side of the house. This time I'm sitting on our deck and looking out at the view. And the part of the problem is there's no um, shade. So you're staring at this bright glaring um, paper and I try not to wear sunglasses when I'm painting. So it just gets really, really bright. But um, I think what I liked that day was the atmosphere in the mountains. And like I said, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to force atmosphere to make things look like they go off in a distance. I mean, that's what's so beautiful about these mountains. If you've seen my Instagram, you know, I've photographed these over and over and over. And it, I keep trying to capture this, like where it's dark on top and it goes down into light, almost like there's fog or something in the valleys. And then this is this uh, Apache plume bush that's up close. And I think I captured it really well. Apache plume has these little fuzzy um, sort of flowers and, uh, sorry, that's my dog barking. I'll go, I'll go turn him off in a second. Okay, we just had the invasion of the trash truck and I think we're good now. Um, I painted this. So this was painted, uh, 07. Um, what month is that? May, June, July. In July, and this was painted in May. So this was actually painted before this one. Um, this is this was painted at a park with Red Rocks, actually near Red Rocks. I'm sitting with uh, Red Rocks Amphitheater, let's see, on my, uh, I guess it would be on my right hand side. And um, just, this is another one of those where you're working in the sunshine. I didn't bring umbrellas. I do have things to give me shade, but, um, your your colors start to get your rods and cones get burned out in your eyes and you you lose track of what color you're working in because the paper is so bright and you, every time you look up your the square of your paper is kind of burned into your eyes and it's a whole thing um but what do i remember about this i remember oh uh still doing that thing with the contour you can see it a little bit here trying to show the contour of the land and then the, the contour of the land. And this dot was already on the page. I think it was actually ink, so I couldn't remove it. And then also just the, the difficulty of how do you show trees without painting every tree? I mean, what's, what is my obligation here? And then um, the, capturing that sort of soft gray of those sage bushes in a way that felt accurate to me. I like the rocks. I think I did those pretty well. And the and the atmosphere, the distance. This is farther away from this, and then so on until you're up close. And then trying to decide how to handle the up close. 
This is a real chatty flip through. This is from a photo. Oh, here's, a, here's the actual painting I did at the um, iris farm. So I went ahead and painted. I prepped my paper with a an, an ink, a permanent ink. So uh, I knew, I, I actually didn't think it was gonna be quite so rainy, but that's why the yellow isn't runny. But this is gouache, which is opaque watercolor. So it's really, it will open up and move with water. So it just, I just decided, you know, I'm just gonna go for it and paint in the rain. And um, you can see what it is. It's iris and that one's open and here's the leaves. And I actually really like it. Um, and I feel like if I'm going to become, if I'm going to work on being an abstract artist, I need to be okay when things don't go the way that I'm trying to make them go and, and sort of go with the flow. I kind of like how you can see the rain then it was a real trick getting it back to the car because the paint wasn't dry and this is a book so I had to carry it all awkwardly. This I did at home. This is from a photo I took in Kyoto. This is a, an inn. Actually I think it's a restaurant. I don't think it's like a, I don't remember. You can look it up if you're interested but um, we we're walking back on this side of the river. This is a river. That's a path. That's a cool building. There were more details but you're as the artist, you're like, which details do I get to put in and do I get to eliminate? It's editing. And then this is the same thing with the uh, the cherry blossoms. It's like I was searching for a certain pink without um, sort of deadening the pink with brown. I think I did okay. Once I spend more than 90 minutes on a piece, I either it starts to become overworked or I get bored of it. So I think I think I was kind of right there. Uh, this uh, is in my backyard and I really like this grouping of trees and just always trying to get better at painting trees and seeing if there's a way that I can capture their character without feeling obligated to you know, paint every rib or draw every rib in the skeleton to draw every leaf in the tree. You know, how do I show that each of these trees is a different tree? And actually there's another one in the back that's a different color. So this is rabbit brush. This is a juniper. It's cottonwood. I think that was a different cottonwood. That's an olive. That's an aspen. So, and then here... Oh, this is in my backyard, trying to just commit to spending time painting. I remember not liking this very well, and I still don't really like it, although I'm glad I spent the time doing it. Sometimes you, if you're training for a marathon, you just get to run around the block instead of doing a full run. This is from a um, Facebook group called... Um, something like uh, reference photos for artists or something. And um, people post images there and I was really inspired by this image. The, they, what they want is, um, they would like you to post your painting or drawing in the, um, in the group so that the pho photographer can see their art being used, but they don't really want to be linked so these are people basically saying, um, hey, artists, you're welcome to use this and you don't have to give me credit. So um, I don't think I would sell a piece like this without finding the artist or maybe I would hide their initials in here somewhere because I would if I did make a print of this, which I might because I, I really do like it, um, I still would want to thank them. Or maybe I would contact that uh, person separately and ask them if I can add their name or how they feel about it so but the the group is meant to be for artists to use it and then go ahead and use their um, paintings however they want but um, it's not my photo and um, I didn't pay for it so I still do feel a little bit of obligation but um, this is another example of learning what to keep and what to edit um, you know how much do you show I could have done the some contour lines on the roof. So 
So um, you, you look at a picture and you think, what is it I like about it? What do I want to make sure that I do include? And you know, like these windows, um, look at how they're just dots and dashes. They're not perfect squares, but they still read like windows. It's sort of like if you look at a photo of your parents when they were young, and it's an old photo and it's small and black and white, and you just barely see a shadow of a nose and you can't see the mouth because it's also blurry and small. And you're like, that's my mom, that's my dad. And you know who everyone is. You recognize, you don't need every piece of detail to recognize what something is. And so as a painter, you're doing that too. You're thinking, what's the least amount of detail for me to add so that uh, the person looking at it knows what I'm, what it is. So I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I did spray this with fixative. I had to go dig out my fixative. Let me show it to you in a second. This one is really good. I like the matte finish because once it dries, you can't tell that it's been fixed. But I'm messy and I end up not covering the other pages when I spray and so I end up making a mess of everything. So I think that's probably something I need to work on is masking off the just the page I'm spraying because I end up just spraying it and then I ruin the opposing page but I did spray this one this is um pastels you can see it's just everywhere you can see the some places the fix didn't fix this is from a photo that I took January, February, March, April, May, June. So this is June. Um, this was uh, done in plein air um, near the hospital. This is actually done near Coal Creek um, on a different day. And I decided I was going to go in and pay a lot of attention to the foreground and see if I really could um, capture it without feeling obligated to paint every leaf and every blade of grass. And then I also did one of those stands of trees. I just love that. I love the, I don't know, the unit of a stand of trees. And um, really recommend bringing a white pencil. Let me show you my white pencil that I love. I have a lot of white pencils, but this is the one I keep coming back to is the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. And um, I just, it's fantastic. It works really well. So that's what, you know, that's what this grass is. And the light on the side, I think this is gouache, a colored pencil. And then to go back in and lighten up and show the light peeking through the trees, and then um, this black, let me show you some blacks that I like. Okay, all right, here's the black I like. So if you're, um, if you wanna set up a sketchbook with paints and watercolors and stuff, um, I really recommend keeping a Faber-Castell Polychromos black. It's waxy, which is nice. And then a Chinese white, Derwent Chinese white. These are just really handy to have to go in to add these little details and just right at the very end. It's really nice to have. So that's, I recommend these. And anytime I see them on sale, I buy them again because I'm now I'm sort of worried that I'm not going to have them because I love them so much. Okay, so then this was uh, October um, just recently. Um, right now it's November, so this was about a month ago. I went to uh, a park near me. I think I did this from a photo. Went to a park near me a couple weeks before this and took a bunch of photos, but still working on how to push things back and bring things forward and really carefully applying the paint in this case so that I didn't have to go in and add. The, these are actually called sky holes. So I didn't have to add the sky holes. I painted them in, but I did, I think I drew, I did go in with my pencil and actually draw a couple of branches in, which you're allowed to do. There's no like, you said it's a painting police. You can't draw in a painting, then you can't call it a painting. You know, there's no, 
you do what you need to do. I, I'm learning this. I used to, you know, when you're an art student, they're like, you only can use these five things. And then you get this idea locked in your head that there are rules. But once you're at home doing your own art, there's no rules. There are no rules. Let's see. Inno Kashira Park. So this is from a photo um, that I took in... Japan, a little bridge with people on it, still working on how to communicate water, sky, distance, and then being able to go in at the end and draw the humans, which I think I painted part of it. Oh, I might have painted all of it. But I love that little crisp bridge in the background of the soft um, painting. Um, uh, I could stand to do a little more work on this bridge, but that's fine. Sketchbooks aren't meant to be final paintings. This is from another um, photo that I took in Japan. This is a statue. It's a woman holding a baby, I think. And then I loved the way the shadows were going across. And I loved all the branches. And it's a beginner artist this would have scared the crap out of me because there's so much green and there's so many branches and how do you do that but as I get better and better I'm not as scared by this kind of thing and it feels almost like I need to have something in here it, this kind of complexity to make it interesting and give me something to work on so I think I painted this twice because I I I think I forgot to switched to a smaller brush and I tried to do this with a larger brush and it ended up being kind of blobby. So I think I painted it again to try to do this better. I don't know if I did it in here. Oh, <laughs> there it is. So um, just, I think it was, let's see, the same day? No, nope, two days later, um, I just painted the same photo working on atmosphere and I made the foreground much darker and the background more blue. Things that are farther away are bluer, but then I exaggerated it. And um, I let go of the accuracy of the fence and the stairs and worked more on the mood. So, it's interesting to look at them side by side like that. Um, this is from a photo that I took at Chatfield <clears throat> um, during the Lavender Festival, and uh, I think I got a little carried away with the detail of the barn. Um, I think um, maybe I would enjoy this more if I had drawn this in that style that I did those iris. Actually, this is done, I think, right before that, or around the same time, so maybe this is right when I decided... Um, not to worry so much about what whether the building had the right number of boards and stuff. But um, I feel pretty good about the distant mountains. And I think this was ink, so I can get it off. Did this one fairly recently from the photo I took in the back of my chiropractor's office. And um, thinking how much I really enjoy painting and drawing. This this was like nothing to me. This felt uh, natural and satisfying. And even though the sky was pure blue, um, it was totally okay with me that I did it in this fashion and let it kind of dry and get messy like this because, um, I don't know, it just, this, this feels really natural and comfortable to me. So I think I need to continue to do more of these type of uh, painting drawings. Um, this was done in plein air at that same lake that had the stand of trees and the water with the um, lines in it, contour lines. This is from a photo. I, I don't love it at all. Um, it was sort of uh, practice and what I keep thinking about is how you can see the blue of the sky reflected in leaves and how do you show that and so I just went through my photos and found one that had that sort of light blue color 
of the sky reflected in the leaves and so I was just trying to show that and I think I did a pretty good job and these are flowers from my garden that I photographed and this I painted in plein air um, above NCAR in Boulder this I, I have pictured myself the artist with the bag of art supplies and I parked went drove up there parked my car went on a hike found a place to paint, sat down and painted. And like, that's what I want the rest of my life to be. So even though this painting isn't amazeballs, um, the experience was, I loved this. I would do this if I could, and it is my plan. If I could, this is how I would spend the rest of my life. So I'm almost 60. So let's hope I live another 30 years and maybe I can do 30 years worth of these kind of paintings. Um, again, working on pushing things farther away by making them more faded and more blue even though when I'm looking at it um, I know that this tree here is the same color as this tree and it's hard to, you have to fight with your logical brain and say no but there's a lot of air and atmosphere and distance and then there's also this thing about how um, red and yellow color forms uh fall they don't make it the blue light form blue light waves travel farther and so you are more likely to see the blue of something than the red or the yellow of something that doesn't really make sense but I've watched a bunch of videos about color and I'm trying to sort of override my logic so that I can look at something like this and know how to handle it confidently let's do this one first so this is another one I was uh, down in Denver for a chiropractor appointment. And um, one of my rules of thumb is that I need to have a bathroom nearby or somewhere I can sneak a pee. And I went to this park and it was next to a library and the library was closed for renovations or something. So I didn't have a bathroom nearby and that was annoying. So I made this a super quick drawing. And one way that I did it was by abbreviating it. And I didn't really like it. I wasn't really enjoying myself, but I'm I'm committed to being the kind of artist that can sit down and draw or paint anything and just do it. And um, so I did it. And uh, I like a couple things. I, I feel like I did the thing where you just, you can show what it is without feeling like you have to be exact. I like the bushes in front. I like that tree. I don't really like that tree so much. I got out this history of art book that I have and I thought, I wonder if, wonder what it would be like to do a small sort of thumbnail of a uh, painting. And so I found a couple that I liked and that was interesting. I learned a lot about um, painting the rocks. Greece on the ruins of Missolonghi. I have no idea what the story is. So maybe I should look that up. Um, but I ended up kind of thinking about how do you paint rocks on top of rocks. And then this one, it doesn't look at all like the final, but I ended up just liking him anyway and had some fun with the background and his hands. So we're close to the end, you guys. Um, this one, oh, this is from a photo, but I just, I just had like, a thing of paint sitting out, leftover paint, and I just really quickly did it. One of the things that I was curious about is um, how to show trees on distant, or groups of trees, or what do we call it? You know, um, forest growth on the side of a mountain. How do you show that? So that's what that is. You, you know, you when you're in high school, you... Um, practice your handwriting, writing your name over and over. And I guess sometimes that's what a sketchbook is. It's like, I wonder if I tried this and I'm going to try that. And ooh, I like that. And this is a painting plus drawing of uh, from a photo I took in Santa Fe a year and a half ago. Um, so it's, this was only a few days ago I did this. So the 19th and I think it's 10 days later. Um, what I like about this is that I didn't allow myself to feel, um, intimidated by how many leaves there are on a tree. And, um, 
I am trying to sort of take the uh, like I am God attitude. I I this is my page, and I'm gonna decide how many trees there are. I get to decide how many windows there are because this is my world that I'm creating. And um, as a former graphic artist, it's hard to make my own decisions sometimes because I'm so used to being told what other people want me to do. And it's weird for me to work without that sort of directive. And so um, that's kind of what I'm working on. It's like, who's the audience? Well, it's nobody. It's just like, it's what I want to do. And uh, it was fun um, just making my own decisions for myself. And uh, Jessamy, the same one who does the contour, um, you know, the water and stuff, I'm, I've sh hopefully I've shown you by now. Um, but another thing that she does is she takes the branches, well, it's more here, this one. She takes the branches in of a thing, of a tree, and goes all the way to the end. Even though if you were drawing it accurately, it doesn't do that. Um, I felt like if she can do it, I, I can do it. And so um, I like that. I like that. Look. Then this, um, I watched a, I'm so fascinated with true crime and cult um, documentaries. And so I watched a thing about uh, the Twin Flames cult. And this is, what is her name? Victoria. And I loved her coloring. And so I took a screenshot of, t I mean, I took a photo with my phone of the TV and I painted her and I didn't like the background that I did. So I painted over it with, um, where it is, white acryl gouache, which is um, acrylic paint, which means it, it has polymer binding. Uh, this is gouache. I don't know where it is. Um, Acryl gouache is acrylic paint, so it has polymer binding, so it um, it's used like acrylic paint, but it's matte. So once it dries, then you can work back on top of it again. So I just painted um, yellow watercolor over the top. So I didn't like the one that I did, and I, I really messily painted my acryl gouache over it to sort of try to rescue this page. Um, <clears throat> Don't think that acryl gouache is gouache. It's flat acrylic. Um, this is a watercolor I did from a photo. Again, working on the same things. How do I push the background away? How do I show trees growing without feeling like I have to paint every tree? How to paint water and paths that look like water and paths? Um, this is the, the Jessamy idea where you draw you bring the lines all the way to the edge of the shape. And same here, almost like a cutaway of the, of the bush. And um, then the reason this is messed up is I had sprayed this page with the fixative and it had gotten on this page. And so it was causing this side to beat up and then I just decided to leave it, to not worry about it and paint on it anyway. And then I decided uh, this book is almost done, so I rushed this page. I just went on Google and looked at houseplant um, images and tried to do simplified houseplants to continue to teach myself that you don't have to paint every single vein and leaf and stem and that you're allowed to simplify and you don't have to have your colors be accurate. And so it seems really obvious, but it's hard to do, hard for me to do. And then this is from a photo I took in Japan. This is actually, there's this really cute mall that had um, terraced gardening in the front and tiny little plants almost like house plant size like these were little tiny cherry blossom trees these were actually maybe four or five inches tall and then they had little itty bitty houses with like christmas lights inside so the whole hillside looked like a little japanese hillside but it was miniature it was so cute and um i think i've painted this a few times i just think it's the cutest 
And that's it. That's the end of this book. So you wanted a chatty, you voted, a few of you voted that you wanted a chatty sketchbook tour. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.